We are finally into projectile motion, so I'm um, pretty excited about today. It's a great, it's a great little topic. Subtopic, I guess. Yeah. Now, before we actually get started on any of the maths, you need to know what this is talking about, and you guys know how much um, I'm into language, so we're going to try and address what the topic is, first by thinking about what, what this thing is talking about. So, you need to know what projectiles are. Projectiles are objects uh, that are, you know, given some kind of initial force, right? So, for example, fired out of a cannon or thrown from an arm, okay? So that's why you get these kinds of verbs, they come up quite often. Uh, and importantly, they're only under the force of gravity. So, you know, we're not worrying about air resistance, we're not worrying about, like, um, spinning objects that affect their, um, their motion. Gravity is the only thing that's going to act to change the object's velocity. So this is something about acceleration, okay? So I'm just going to put here, no air resistance. Now, depending on the object that you're talking about, it either gets thrown or it gets fired, but the general word that we talk about, like regardless of like if it was a particle or something like that with no description, they would say it's been projected. That's where the word projectile comes from, okay? Now, projected is a lovely word, uh, it's a really, really wonderful word because it is that wonderful combination of a prefix and a suffix and you put them together and we actually use this suffix, this part here, we use it for all kinds of other words that we know about. Come on, give me a, give me a help here. Suggested. Okay, so say it again. <laughs> okay, okay, so you're, you're giving me with the same prefix. Give me some words you start differently but end the same way. Okay, subjected. Percentile. What? 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 The other one. Okay, so if you, I'm going to use these all as verbs, okay? How about subject, when you get an immunization, the way you get that is, you get it injected, right? If a pilot wants to get out of their plane, they eject, right? If you, um, if someone gives something to you and then you give it straight back, you reject it, right? Now all of the things, these are wonderful words, right? And you can say object and all that kind of thing. Just think about this. Okay, when you, um, when you inject something, when you inject something, you take something and you, you put it into something else, right? You put it in. When you eject something, you know, something's already in there and you're taking it out. Uh, when you reject something, you're taking something and you're putting it back. And when you subject something, like if, if one country subjects another one, what's it doing? It's putting it, it's putting it down, right? Sub, sub, okay. So project means you're putting something where? Out. We've already got out. We've got out. I don't think I have up, right? See, where, where do we get the word pro from? This means forward, right? Like progress, okay? So this is really about throwing forward. But you can throw backwards as well. Uh, well, if you're throw, so what do you mean by backwards, right? If, you, if you're doing that, yes, but that means like that's the forward, right? Oh, like that's your new forward, right. okay? So it's always, you're, you're always sending it in a particular direction. So anyhow, you couldn't ask for a better word really in terms of like, all these different things. Now, we're talking about, when we say forward, right? We generally mean up and away, right? Um, good morning. So we need a picture here. Let's draw a set of axes. Let's draw a set of axes. But as soon as we think about what this is going to look like and how we're going to represent it visually, we encounter a little bit of a problem. Namely that, when we've been dealing with motion before, um, and we draw ourselves like a set of axes like these, what have each of our axes been indicating? Yeah, time and displacement, right? Morning. Time and displacement makes sense because you're only thinking about, good morning, Displacement along a single axis, right? So we would have said, okay, here's your x-axis. We would have temporarily weirded out that it was vertical. But we said, it kind of makes more sense for this to be time. This is your, bless you, independent variable. And this is displacement, which depends on time. So that's why we said, let's orient it vertically. Okay. However, if I take an object, right, and I'm now throwing it through the air. Oh, shouldn't have caught it in my left hand. That would have been this one. And it's, it's going up and down, right? But it's also going like left, right, or, or across, backwards, that kind of thing, right? Then I kind of have two axes, and I want to use both of them to represent, rather than a spatial change and a chronological change, I kind of want to use both of these for spatial change. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to happily return x to being back on its horizontal orientation, 
and I'm going to make this one wide. So I've got horizontal and vertical change. Now, if I throw an object through the air, it traces a path sort of like this, right? Is it any point? Okay. We'll talk a bit more about this shape um, in, well, we'll see if we get to it this lesson. We do have three periods after all. When you have a look at this though, remember how we said, oh, it was really nice before when we had time and x displacement because you can look at every point on there and it represents a different time. Now, I can't put another axis on my piece of paper because, or my whiteboard, because it only has two dimensions. If I wanted to have an extra dimension, it kind of have to like come, come out of the board or I'd have to try and draw it in an awkward way. So I don't really want to do that. I want to kind of avoid that. However, this is still a passage of time. Do you notice this? Like the object starts somewhere, um, after some number of seconds, minutes, it gets to here, and then it gets to here. So time is kind of hiding behind the x and the y changes that there are. It's kind of like this third thing that's being measured on the side of x and y. A third thing that's being measured along the x and y. We have a name for this. We call it a parameter. Right? So, for example, if I picked a point, right? Obviously, it's got an x and a y coordinate, okay? But the x and the y coordinate, each one of them independently relies on t. Okay, so even though I don't have an explicit time axis, I'm going to define t as my parameter in the same way that, good morning, on the unit circle, I define my angle as the parameter, and on the parabola, do you remember what I defined as the parameter on the parabola? I defined the gradient at any point, okay? Because the gradient made sense. Um, on a circle, you can define any point on that circle given an angle, okay? And you can define it uniquely. On the parabola, you can define any point on that parabola based on its gradient, and you can define it uniquely, right? There's only a single point on any parabola where the gradient is, say, one, right? And there'll be a single point where it's zero and a single point where it's negative 500, whatever. When you have a look at this, there is only a single point along this curve where there's a particular time. So time makes sense, good morning, as a parameter, okay? All right, so far so good. Um, you may like to also add on to your diagram. Here I said to you, a projectile is an object that's been thrown or fired, right? And so we've been comparing it to all these words. When we talk about changing the suffix, that gives you all these different things. But if you change it in one more different way, which is very, very different. Very, very, very different. Projecting is kind of the opposite of propelling, right? So in fact, when I alluded to this subject before, and some people said, oh, a rocket. Rockets, missiles, planes, birds, right? Anything that has some kind of propulsion, right? That is going to keep on moving, not just under the force of gravity, but under the flapping of its wings or the driving of its engine, right? Those objects are propelled, not projected. So therefore, on our diagram here, right at the starting point, this is often very helpful. At the beginning, I want you to draw in an arrow that indicates uh, kind of a, well, basically a tangent line. Okay? That's the initial force that gets provided, and that's it. That's all that makes this thing move. The rest of it that changes the motion is gravity. That's what brings it back to Earth, and it's not getting faster, not getting slower under any other influence. Okay? All right, so this looks good. Now, having a look at this diagram, right? We've got x's and y's now, so it's moving along these two axes of motion. So this complicates things, right? Because before, all I needed to worry about was three quantities, x, x dot, and x double dot, right? Once you do displacement, velocity, and acceleration, in straight line motion, there's only one kind of displacement or velocity or acceleration because you only have a single axis of motion. This is no longer the case, is it, right? So alongside worrying about x, x dot, and x double dot, I'm going to have to worry about not just this horizontal change, but the vertical change as well, right? So along with these guys, you're going to get y, y dot, and y double dot, okay? So every time you think about projectile motion, you will get six equations of motion. Okay, six equations. We're going to work with all of these, but you need to think about them very carefully. You want to distinguish between horizontally and vertically.
And also, can I just uh, make a big statement? As you write these equations, and because you've got so many flying around, you, I, I can't stress it enough, right? Please don't um, just look up for a second. Probably for most of this, when you write x dot, you probably just do literally this. You write your x, and then you just place a dot, right? I'm going to strongly encourage you not to do that. I'm going to encourage you to color in a dot. You wouldn't believe the number of times students have written the expression and they've just they just put the dot there. And because you're in a hurry and you've got a million equations flying around, you just don't see the dot there, or you think there are two, or it's just really silly. How many students make errors just from misreading their own writing? Okay, so make your dots nice and big and obvious.